Hey everybody, it's Bure Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today I want to talk about the one filter that I own with my Fuji X100F. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's a great channel. We love it here, and we talk about the Fuji X100F a lot, as well as uh, professional photography in general. And uh, be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photo Bomb. It's been going on for three years now. Me and Gary Hughes, we do a podcast every single week where we break down the photography news of the week, and we just talk about our jobs and our work, and we have a lot of fun. It's kind of like hanging out with a couple of photography buddies uh, for lunch every single week. I guarantee you'll enjoy it. And also, be sure and check my Facebook page. I have a group on Facebook called Pro Photo Talk with Bure Perry, a bunch of just fantastic photographers in there and uh, we laugh and joke and ask each other questions and work things out online and it's a great group to be a part of and it's on Facebook so be sure and check that out as well. Okay so let's talk about the one filter that you don't need if you own the Fuji X100F before we start talking about the one that you do need and that's this one. I I'm sad to say that I do own this filter. I own this filter even though I don't need it and I really don't use it but I bought it because it was knee-jerk when I bought my camera, I still had the old school idea in my head that if you're going to buy a camera or you're going to buy a lens, you have to buy a UV filter for your lens. But you really, really don't because a UV filter doesn't really help your photography. You see, UV filters are built to block UV rays, which affect film. But we shoot with digital cameras, so we don't need to block UV rays. So when you get a UV filter and you put it on the front of your camera, what you're really doing is you're putting a cheap piece of glass in front of your very expensive piece of glass that is your lens. Now, some people say it's good protection for the lens, and that's true. It's valid. I mean, there are times, I guess, when I'm going to be on the beach, say, and there's going to be a lot of wind, a lot of sand and some dust, and maybe I would put the UV filter on thinking it might save me from scratching my lens. But more often than not, it's just not worth it because you're talking about a cheap piece of glass. And there's no guarantee that if you drop your lens that this glass would really protect your lens. If the drop is hard enough to smash your lens, it's probably going to smash right through this glass and smash your lens too. Not to mention, really, having a lens hood on your camera, and I have a lens hood on my camera, that protects your lens better than this ever can because then nothing ever hits the lens if you drop your camera. So if you want a UV filter, they're cheap. And uh, they can maybe save you from some scratches, and so, you know, you can get one. And I've got a link to this one on my website. Uh, the link is uh, below. Uh, but if you don't have a UV filter, don't feel like you're taking an unnecessary risk, because I really don't think that they're necessary anymore. Another filter that's not necessary, but I do own it and I do use it because it's fun to use, is this one. And this is a circular polarizing filter. And you can really affect your photography with this filter. And the great thing about the Fuji is that because the lens is so small, you can get filters really, really cheap. You can find this one on sale for 25 or 35 bucks easy, which is nothing to pay for a little device that you can use to change your photographs and also to have some fun. So what a circular polarizer does is it actually turns. And when you mount it on your camera, you can turn the front lens element here and decide exactly how much polarization you want. And this is great because unlike the old days when we shot with film, now you can see everything in real time using the EVF. So you can look through, turn that knob, and see exactly how much polarization you need. So what does polarization do for you? Well, what it really does is it cuts down glare. It cuts down on the glare that you get from light reflecting off of objects. One of the rules of using a polarizing filter is that you need to have the sun at a 90 degree angle to your camera to really see the effect of a polarizing filter. But the truth is that any time that light is reflecting or glaring off of an object, a polarizing filter will make a difference in your photograph. So let's take a look at a couple of pictures here, some before and afters, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Probably the most common place that you will see a polarizing filter being used is any place that you have a lot of water. Uh, this is a perfect example right here. If you're taking a picture of a fast-moving stream, you're going to get so much reflection in the water and glare off the surface of the water that a lot of it becomes white and you lose some of the effect of the photograph that you're trying to get. So if you put a polarizing filter on your camera, immediately it changes the entire dynamic of the picture. As you can see here now, you can see through the water, you can see the rocks on the bottom, and it just drastically changes the picture. And this is probably the most common use of a polarizing filter. You just won't see a person who shoots landscapes or shoots anything that involves a babbling brook without a polarizing filter on their camera. 
Another place it can make a big difference is in your sky. I know that you think of reflections, you think of maybe water or a shiny object, but the sun also reflects off the sky, and so it will make a difference in how your sky looks. And the perfect example is if you just take your camera and turn it 90 degrees to the sun on a bright day and use a polarizing filter, you'll immediately see that your sky is going to become more blue. Now, one of the side effects of using a polarizing filter this way is that it can sometimes be a variable blue, and you can see sometimes around the edge of the image that it's not quite as blue as it is at the other side of the image. If you want to avoid that, you might have to do a little cropping, which is easy to do when you're shooting as wide as we do with the Fuji X100F. But if you want a bluer sky, you can't go wrong with a polarizing filter. Once you start to play around with it, you'll be surprised at the changes it can make in your photographs that you didn't really expect. And this is a good example. Here's a piece of wood. You wouldn't think it would make much of a difference here, but it actually does. It does make a difference because there is glare on that wood. Now, there's nothing at all special about this photograph, but it is a good way to show how the filter just changes your photography. And sometimes just putting it on your camera and playing around with it will show you lots of different things. And this is a great example. This picture changes once you put a polarizing filter on it. So how might it change other pictures that I take? Well, I don't know, but I need to take this filter with me and try it out from time to time and see what I get. Well, that's it. The circular polarizing filter. The only filter that I really own for my Fuji and the only one that I really use. And it's so small and it fits in your back pocket or it fits in your kit, no problem. And it's not very expensive. So buy one and try it out. You know, work with it a little bit. The thing about the Fuji is it's so much fun just to grab your camera and say, I think I'm just going to go out and try and make some photographs today. And having one little tiny tool in your pocket that can change those photographs and make the experience more fun for you well, I mean, that's just a win-win for everybody, right? So I really just don't see a good reason to not own a polarizing filter. Uh, by the way, the other benefit of the polarizing filter is if when you need it, you typically are in, in bright sun situations, and the polarizing filter also acts as a neutral density filter. So it's going to take maybe a stop off of your camera, and then you've also got the three stops that you can take off your camera using the neutral density filter that is built into the Fuji X100F. So... That's great. You can pull four stops off of your camera and shoot wide open at f2.4 uh, or some really, really low aperture to really get a shallow depth of field, even in bright sunlight. So it's absolutely worth the money. Uh, check it out on my website, and uh, I got mine from Amazon and the Polarizing Filter. I recommend it. See you here next time.